In my last video, we discussed cable selection using Ohm's Law. Now this is important to understand because it affects every kind of signal that we use in Pro-AV. It came to my attention that finding cable data sheets and understanding them can make the use of Ohm's Law very difficult. So, today we'll look at a few cable data sheets so we can understand what's important to know. First, let's consider a simple audio cable. Now here's a popular two-conductor shielded audio cable that we'd use when installing a traditional sound system. So what do we need to know to determine if this cable's right for the job? Besides knowing whether it's rated for use to meet fire codes, we need to know the electrical properties here. For use in analog systems, the most important item is DC resistance. Here we see 16.6 .6 ohms per thousand feet. Then you'll need to calculate the specific resistance for the actual length of cable that you need. So if we're using a 100 foot cable length, the resistance will be a tenth of that 1000 foot value, or 1.66 ohms. After that we need to know more about the output of our source device. In the case of a popular microphone here, we see the electrical output is 1.85 millivolts. That's 0.00185 volts. So using Ohm's law, we divide 0.00185 by the resistance of our 100 foot cable, which is 1.66 ohms. That gives us 0.0011 amps of current. Now that we know the current, we can multiply that by the cable resistance to get 0.0018 volts lost over the 100 foot cable run. That's roughly only 0.024 decibels lost, which can easily be made up in the front end of a mixer or a preamp. Now of course that number will be a lot higher as the output voltage increases, but the difference between output minus loss is what makes the difference over a given distance. Now let's look at an SDI digital video cable. Digital data always occupies a fixed bandwidth of space, unlike that variable frequency that we see in an analog signal. So the first thing we need to consider is the bandwidth of the cable. Now SDI signal standards that you see here show the cable bandwidth requirements based on the bit rates of the signal. The most common signal used in Pro-AV right now is 3G SDI. The higher bit rate signals are primarily used to distribute 4K signals in broadcasting. With a 3G SDI signal, we now know we need a cable with at least 2.97 gigabits per second bandwidth capacity. Looking at the data sheet for a popular 3G SDI cable, we can see that at 3 gigabits per second bit rate, we have 9.2 decibels of attenuation per 100 feet. Now looking at this distance chart, you can see that with that amount of attenuation, we can still get about 100 meters or 330 feet of distance at 3 gigabits bandwidth. With digital signals and the high bandwidth requirements, the capacitance of the cable really plays a bigger role than with lower frequency analog signals. So this means that you'd have to calculate losses from cable resistance, capacitive reactance, as well as the velocity factor. So while you still manually can calculate the losses yourself, manufacturers' data sheets always publish these figures for you. So now you'll be able to choose the correct cable for your application by simply using the manufacturer's data sheets.